If Apple made their own Facebook, would you use it? What about an Apple version of Twitter, Instagram, and even a search engine? Would you use those too? Wouldn't it be great if social networks these days weren't like you know who and value data safety and security and user privacy above all else? Doesn't an Apple social network just make so much sense in 2021? Well, what if I told you that not too long ago, Apple kind of publicly tried and failed to start their own social network, but maybe why it's time they should try again now. This is a really interesting story that I bet you haven't heard before. Definitely not like this. Now I'd like to get on to the entree today, iPods. This story starts over 10 years ago at an Apple event I bet you don't remember for a product you probably don't use much at all or even care about these days. It only takes a quick glance at their stock price or a quick survey of the phones people around you have to understand that Apple is one of the world's most valuable companies, a pioneer technology trailblazer that is selling best-selling product after best-selling product, iMac, iPod, iPhone, iPad, hit after hit after hit. It just seems like Apple never seems to get it wrong, until they do. See, there are very few things that Apple has not succeeded at over the years. And especially in modern Apple history, I can only think of probably a handful of things that Apple really just kind of uh, tried and failed to get consumers to adopt and to love. And if you've been around long enough, Ping might sort of ring a bell in your head. As one of those Apple services that Apple touted as the next big thing, they put a lot of money and a lot of resources into, that quickly kind of fizzled out into obscurity and something that Apple would try to kind of sweep under the rug and pretend didn't happen just a few years later. The short story of Ping is that back in 2010, Steve Jobs himself, along with a new revamped version of iTunes, introduced Ping. And what Ping is, is it's a social network for music. It's sort of like Facebook and Twitter meet iTunes. You know, it's not Facebook, it's not Twitter, it's something else that we've come up with. It's a social network all about music. Users could follow artists, they could check out updates and photos, they could share with their friends what music they were listening to, uh, what songs they liked, they could preview new albums, they could buy music, and really just connect with friends and people they also kind of met in the Ping universe uh, all around music and songs and artists and albums they liked. It was very music-centric, which was a good thing and a bad thing. And to make a long story short, despite some really promising launch figures, Ping just never really took off. And just a little over two years after it launched in 2012, Apple decided to kind of uh, close the virtual doors and cease any operations of Ping. But at the end of the day, everyone kind of remembers Ping as being that failed attempt from Apple to kind of break into social media and start their own social network. And it just was a, a big embarrassment for them, a, a big step away from their biggest blunder. It's not like an antenna gate level or anything, but it was a pretty bad public embarrassment that I think that many people at Apple today would wish that we'd all just kind of forget. And as the years have gone by and technology has changed and specifically social media has changed, Apple has kind of shifted its role from kind of trying to rub elbows and be kind of buddy-buddy with Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to now kind of being more of a parental role because Apple's devices have kind of become a digital home for the giants that Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and others have become. And now Apple's kind of tasked with keeping them in line and keeping them in check to kind of protect the users on the other end of those devices. And this role that Apple has kind of taken on has become increasingly more public public and more controversial over the past couple of years, as the company has really doubled down on their stance on privacy and user data security. You have companies like Facebook and Google who kind of make their living off of collecting information on us who use these devices. The more they know about us, the more data they can collect, the better they can service ads, and the more money they can make. So it's almost like Apple and social networks are kind of just butting heads over these polar opposite viewpoints. Apple wants to stop them from collecting data while Facebook and Google and others would like to collect more and more, which kind of brings us to where we are today. It's pretty safe to say that Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg aren't going to really be friends anytime soon, but it's not just Facebook. Google's also kind of been on Apple's naughty list for a while as well. 
Obviously, Google and Apple have a very long and complicated history. On one hand, you have the Google CEO on stage with Steve Jobs at the unveiling of the original iPhone, a monumental moment. And on the other, you have Apple kicking off Google's uh, default apps from being on the iPhone and replacing them with their own alternatives like Apple Maps. And they've gone back and forth with software and hardware. You have iOS versus Android, iPhone versus Pixel. Obviously there is a relationship there that goes much deeper than just this ad tracking that we're getting into these days. And just like Facebook, Google relies on this information in order to make money. They are almost like an advertising company first and foremost. That is their bread and butter and that is how they're making their money. And having this explicit prompt in the latest version of iOS 14 is not necessarily a good thing for them. In fact, they actually had to go in and kind of change a lot of their underlying uh, technology that they use for ad tracking in order to comply with the new iOS 14 standards in order to uh, prevent that prompt from popping up and reminding users that yes, they are are being tracked and uh, their data is being collected by Google all the time. And all of this kind of leads to some really interesting and important questions. Who is the bad guy here? Are Facebook and Google providing a useful and free service in exchange for this information in order for them to serve you ads? And is Apple kind of being the bully on the playground, kind of uh, leveraging too much power over them? Or is Apple trying to protect the end user, they're doing the right thing, and these big giant tech companies are being a little sleazy in their tracking practices, and they really are trying to collect too much data that they really just should not have access to, and they're kind of stepping over the line that they know they shouldn't be crossing. That's probably a question you're gonna have to answer for yourself, and we can obviously discuss it down below in the comments, but the more interesting question from all of this is that if these companies are kind of not playing nicely and they're not playing by the rules and they're collecting too much data, why doesn't Apple step in and provide an alternative? Why don't they make their own social network that is privacy focused, that protects users' data, that does not sell their information, that does not serve them targeted personal ads? Isn't there a great opportunity now in 2021 to put privacy at the forefront and for Apple to make their own alternative and their own social network? Many are arguing that Apple is one of the only companies with the war chest and the resources that can really take on Facebook and Google and Twitter at scale. They've become so giant these days that not many can compete, but maybe Apple can. And I'm sure many people, including me, would jump on the bandwagon and use an Apple social network. It sounds great, right? Would you use it? Let us know down below. Uh, but I think that there are a couple of big reasons why Apple would not pursue this, at least not right now, even though I'd love to see them do this. A couple of big reasons why I think it's just not gonna happen anytime soon. First and foremost, social media is just not really in Apple's wheelhouse. They make beautiful hardware. They develop amazing software. They continue to nourish and grow this amazing ecosystem of Apple devices and services. But social media just really isn't in there as one of Apple's expertise. It would take a lot of money and a lot of resources to do this at scale and really compete from day one with companies like Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and stuff like that. Something Apple could definitely do, but I'm not really sure if it's a great return on investment. There's also an inherent constant annoyance that kind of comes with running a social media company. You have to be able to filter spam and be aggressively on content moderation, hate speech, you gotta deal with court subpoenas, and moderating users and user discrepancies. There's a lot of potential downsides to this, also a lot of PR blowback that I think Apple would like to avoid. And uh, kind of getting into uh, to this social media landscape would kind of get Apple into uh, mudding the waters a bit when it comes to their shiny, pristine PR image, something I don't think they really want to do. But just because I don't think that Apple could make their own social network doesn't mean the story stops here. Because I instead think we kind of have to change our view on this. I think instead of Apple becoming the destination like the Facebook or the Instagram or the Snapchat, they can rather be the barrier that sits between us and those services that can better protect us and keep our information private and secure and keep our personal information safe. Allow me for a second to use a quick illustration. This is the Apple Card, that weird kind of product category and service that not everybody is really sure why Apple entered, but they did nonetheless. And if you look at this, I think that this is a perfect uh, tangible explanation of what Apple's next moves could be. See, they're not the merchant, they're not the Shopify, they're not the Square, they're not the local coffee shop you're buying your goods from, 
but they're kind of sitting in the middle to protect your information while also kind of giving the other person on the other end, like the merchant, the exact information they need to operate their business. So when I use my Apple Card, my information is safe and secure. Obviously there are no numbers anywhere on this, so my data is private and safe. Apple is not selling my shopping habits. They're not selling my personal information. All of that is safe and secure as well. And if I opt to use Apple Pay on my iPhone with the Apple Card, I'm able to give that merchant a unique uh, transaction ID number that keeps my information safe and that can never be used against me. It's the great kind of go-between. It's that thing that connects us with where we wanna go, but also keeps us safe from potential harm on the other end. What if Apple could take kind of the Apple Card simplicity and privacy approach and apply that to some other things? I still think the idea of an Apple search engine makes so much sense in 2021. Kind of that uh, place that you would go to connect you with the other things on the web you're looking for. Uh, it'd be something similar to DuckDuckGo or maybe Apple would buy DuckDuckGo, but it would be a privacy-centered search engine. It wouldn't track you around the web. It wouldn't serve you personalized targeted ads. It wouldn't sell your browsing habits, your data. It would keep all that anonymous, but still giving you what you want in a safe and secure place to do it. Uh, that wouldn't be like Google or Bing or Yahoo or other search companies that don't have your best interest at heart, Apple would kind of flip the narrative on that and do their own interpretation with the Apple search engine. The same idea goes for an Apple VPN. If Apple can't secure and protect every website on the internet, why can't they just secure your connection to the internet? They kind of be that buffer, that in between, that would uh, not log any of your online activity, they would anonymize all your data, and they would keep you safe and secure from any potential threat on the other end. Apple VPN just makes more and more sense the more that I think about it. And it'd be super easy to implement and put onto every Mac, every iPhone, every iPad with just the matter of a free over the air software update. There is a compelling argument to be made that if these companies will stop at nothing to get our personal information, that Apple should stop at nothing to protect it. And there are a lot of ways Apple could do it uh, that I think just makes so much sense, especially right now in 2021. So where do you guys fall on this issue? I'm really curious. Would you use an Apple search engine and an Apple VPN? Do you have an Apple card? Do you value your privacy uh, in all regards of your digital life? Or do you think that Apple has too much power and Apple should let Facebook and Google uh, track you in order to kind of keep those services free? It's a trade-off. Would you pay to not be tracked? Do you think Apple should be more aggressive, less aggressive? I'm super curious. Please leave your comments down below. Let's discuss and I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle and I will see you guys in the next one.